Well, welcome to you all. It's uh, great to share with you once again from Catsville Baptist Church, online or physical, wherever you are gathered to worship today. Welcome. It is uh, lovely to share together. Again, we have a, a smattering of people in the church as well, uh, worshipping together on this third Sunday of Advent. It's flying past, isn't it? Not that long to go. Uh, until Christmas Day itself. Uh, just a few notices just to begin with to uh, aid your confusion of what's going to happen over the next couple of weeks in terms of services. Um, most of the details are on our website. You'll see them on the, uh, on the homepage. Uh, but we now have to distinguish, don't we, between physical services which you can attend and book for and purely online services. And there is a mix of those. So next Sunday morning is not a physical service. Next Sunday morning is a purely online service. And we're going to join together with churches together in uh, Bromsgrove. And we're joining with the drive-in carol service. There's a drive-in carol service going on at the, uh, the old Dolphin Centre car park. Um, next to the Methodist Church. Sadly, only 60 cars can attend that, a driving service where big screens up and um, you listen in your cars and you can sing along to carols there. Uh, that will be our 10.30 service. It'll be hosted by myself and Steve Leggett, the, uh, the Methodist uh, minister in Bromsgrove. If you want to attend that, there are a few car tickets left. And my guess is you will have to get those today. And to get those, you need to email Steve directly. His email, if I can find it on my uh, device is revlev, R-E-V-L-E-V, revlev66 at gmail.com, revlev66 at gmail.com. And you can take a car if you like to sing uh, as part of the driving carol service, which is in Bromsgrove. If you can't attend that or you want to sing really loud without steaming up your windows in your car, then watch it online. That will go live at 10.30 next Sunday morning. So no physical service next Sunday morning, but we will have a physical service in the evening, which you'll need to book for on our website as normal. Six o'clock will be our carols by candlelight service. Very different this year. And uh, it'll be what it is, but we know that God will be with us. So six o'clock next Sunday evening is our physical service, which you'll need to book for. Should we go ahead? Yes. Carry on. Christmas Eve, we will have an 11.30 online service. So not physical again, but at 11.30 we'll be going live. So use the YouTube chat and we will welcome in Christmas Day together. We will take communion online together as well as part of that service on Christmas Eve. Christmas Day, physical service. So you'll need a book for that if you want to come in at Christmas Day, 10 o'clock in the morning. Like I say, details are on the website, but I just want to alert you, different services, physical and not physical. Christmas Day, we are physical in here and you'll need to book. The Sunday after that, 27th of December, not physical because we can't clean between Christmas Day and uh, the Sunday, so we can't actually gather. So that will just be a, a YouTube service going out on that Sunday. Confused? Let's do a reading, shall we? We're going to read our third Sunday in Advent reading for today, which comes from the Psalm, Psalm 126, which says this. It seemed like a dream when the Lord brought us back to the city of Zion. We celebrated with laughter and songs. In foreign nations, it was said the Lord has worked miracles for his people. And so we celebrated because the Lord had indeed worked miracles for us. Our Lord, we ask you to bless our people again and let us be like streams in the southern desert. We cried as we went out to plant our seeds. Now let us celebrate as we bring in the crops. We cried on the way to plant our seeds, but we will celebrate and shout as we bring in the crops. O oh, come, O oh, ye faithful.
Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Let's pray together, shall we? Lord God, we welcome you among us as we celebrate this third Sunday in Advent. May this day be a day of joy because we have met with you. Oh, come, we adore you. Come by your Holy Spirit, we pray, into this time of worship, into our every being. Fill us up to overflow us. Renew us, Lord God. Remake us. Refresh us. Lord God, we thank you once again for the coming of Christ into our world. We thank you that in his death and his resurrection, we have life. And we thank you that in coming together in worship today, we can celebrate that new life that you bring to us. Sovereign Lord, we give you ourselves once again today. And we ask that you would speak to us. Open our hearts to hear your voice. Open our minds to know your Spirit's leading this day. Have your way among us, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's another thank you to the uh, the good choir and uh, and people uh, recording the music. We have now finished all our Christmas music, so I think we've uh, we've got about two or three weeks off before we have to record again in the new year. But uh, there's a whole backlog of Christmas songs waiting to come out for the uh, Carols by Candlelight service next week as well. But uh, again, thank you to Ben for stepping in, playing the drums as uh, Dan is coping with new babies. And uh, actually, Dan is putting together a, a Christmas extravaganza as well. I don't quite know where he's getting the spare time to do that. But on the uh, Wednesday before Christmas, the 23rd of December, at 7 o'clock on, you, on our YouTube channel, there will be a virtual little Christmas, which uh, Dan and uh, a whole load of other people are putting together, an extravaganza of different things going on. So uh, pray for Dan in uh, putting that together as he... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Some people know what's going on in the background. Uh, let's turn to our Advent candle, shall we? We have lit our uh, uh, Advent candle over the last two weeks, haven't we? Counting down the four Sundays to Christmas Day itself. We first lit the, the first candle two weeks ago, which, as you can remember, was the candle of hope. Good stuff. And uh, the second one last week was the candle of I can remember two weeks ago. We can't remember last week. Last week was peace. You're still thinking about the new building, last, or the uh, sanctuary building last week. Uh, that was peace. Today we light the third candle, the candle of joy. The candle of joy. How joyful are we, really? This year in particular has been a joyless year for so many people. But the Bible tells us that our joy, our spiritual joy, is not from anything. It's not down to an emotion that goes up and down as uh, things go on, and predominantly down this year for many. Our spiritual joy is in, in the Lord, being in Christ. And so today we open ourselves up to that spiritual joy, trusting that God has already planted it in our hearts, the joy found in knowing Christ. That doesn't mean that what we then find in the world should always make us joyful. But that inner joy comes from knowing Christ. Let us light the third Advent candle. We light the first candle of hope. The second candle of peace. And the third candle of joy. Remembering we have one more candle to light before lighting the Christ candle on Christmas Eve and on Christmas Day itself. Let's pray together. Loving God, we open ourselves to you, trusting that this is how you have made us. You created us for joy-filled hearts and lives. As we have lit the candle of hope, show us the creative power of hope in our lives. As we have lit the candle of peace, show us the peace that comes from justice. Your justice. And as we have lit the candle of joy, fill us with the kind of joy that cannot be contained because it comes from you, but needs to be shared. Prepare our hearts 
to be transformed by you. That we may walk in the light of Christ. Amen. challenged us to answer a very simple but I think really a very complex question in trying to explain in just three sentences how I know that God is good and I know that God has been with us. I say complex because I find it very difficult to explain that quickly the life-sustaining conviction that in everything I do God has had his hand upon me because he cares for me. I just simply do experience that. I also know he's good because of the wife I have the life I lead, and the fact that God has placed us into this church family at this point in time, for such a time as this. So as we can be a blessing to you, I hope, and so as we can receive blessings from you, which we do. So in answer to the question, is God good? All the time. Thankful to God um, for his work over the past few months and years in bringing my adoption um, to the point that it's at now. There have been lots of times along the way where I felt there's been a lot of waiting and lots of delays, but actually I can see his timing and everything now. And I'm really thankful that despite lockdown, despite everything that's gone on, the adoption is still going ahead as scheduled. I'm very thankful to God for his timing and his intervention in every stage of the process.
cast all your burdens upon the Lord. Cause Jesus cares, He cares for you. Jesus cares, He cares for you. And all your worrying won't help you make it through. Cast all Trust again in the promise of his love. Yes, I will praise the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord, the lifter of my head. Praise the rock of my salvation. Lockdown has been life-changing for us all. However, as I look back, I realize I've experienced a real sense of God's peace during this time that can only come from God. I'm so thankful to him for his presence day by day, hour by hour. Amen.
Father God, we give you thanks for all of your goodness that you pour out upon us. Thank you that when we look back, not only at these last few months, but on our lives too, when we lean on you, you are always there without fail. You never leave us. You are always by our side. Thank you for that promise. Thank you for the stories of your goodness. You are still with us. But we pray this morning, especially for those who are struggling to know you close by. For those whose depths of struggle are vast. And those whose faith in you is quite understandably wavering. Those who have lost loved ones and have so many questions. Those who are struggling with the health of themselves or with loved ones. Those whose financial futures are unclear. Those whose relationships are tough. Those whose mental health is causing distress. Those who see no way out. Lord God, would you encourage them to lean on you? And would you come ever closer to them? Strengthen them? Provide for them? Comfort them? Protect them, Lord? Even in these difficult times, would you show them that you are still with us? Emmanuel. And we continue to pray for our world, which is still struggling to deal with the effects of this pandemic. We pray especially for the USA at the moment, seeing record cases of COVID and seeing no way out. Would you have your hand upon that nation and its decision makers? And as we uh, roll out vaccines over the coming weeks and months, we pray especially for the most vulnerable. Not only in our country, but across the world too. Lord God, would you influence the decision makers? That those on the margins, those countries with little or no money for the cost of vaccines, those with people crying out in despair because of this virus, Lord, would you in some way ensure that the most needy are the ones that receive help? Advent, God who came as a child on that first Christmas day, would you come into our world right now and bring healing, restoration and hope. For we choose to put our trust in you, our Saviour, our Redeemer. Amen.
When we went into lockdown, older people were asked to stay in their homes as they were vulnerable. How was I to serve the Lord at CBC, something that was close to my heart, my calling? God bless me with this verse from Isaiah 46, verse 4. Even in your old age, grey hairs, I am he, I am he who will sustain you. I continued serving our Lord in the strength of that verse and he hasn't let me down, praise his name. I'd just like to share a moment that um, happened on Saturday. Um, after shielding for such a long time um, and just being really careful where um, we're going and um, we decided to go to Hanbury Hall and um, to go for um, a walk around the, um, the back of Hanbury Hall um, and um, we were very well wrapped up because it was cold and but I had such a moment of um, feeling um, close to God and that God is in control. Um, as we walk in um, we came to a bit of a higher place and um, and I just suddenly stopped. I think John did wonder what I was doing but I suddenly became really aware of the big expanse of sky um, that I hadn't seen for a bit. And even though it made me feel very small, it made me realise how big God is and how, how he's in control. And it, I just had just a moment of everything's OK. And um, it was quite um, it was quite comforting. So I just wanted to share that with you this morning.
just be still for a moment and allow God to come to us and continue to minister to us. Father God, we welcome you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. When the oceans rise and the storms come, we would choose to put our trust in you, Lord Jesus. We will be still and know that you are God and nothing is impossible for you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Oh man, I've loved 
receiving those uh, short videos from folk within church. I uh, hope you have too. Quite a lot of them have shown um, what messy lives we have and what messy lives we've had, particularly over these last few months. Who'd have thought a year ago? I don't know whether you can remember back to last Christmas. There's a song there, isn't there? Um, I don't know if you remember back to last Christmas. Um, and we we're about to start a new year, 2020, all going to that new year, wondering what the new year would bring. Who'd have thought that a year on, we'd have had the year that we've had? That for some people like Sue, who we've just seen on the uh, video there, who'd have thought that she would spend the majority of the year indoors, shielding? And that the very best, when she did go out, avoiding people. Who would have thought that that would be the year we'd have? Who would have thought that a year on in church, we would have however many people are here today? 15, 20 people in a building and people communicating to our church online. I've had, I'll go off camera. I've had comments from um, John and Pauline Eagles. Jackie and Keith Medler, John and Cynthia are with us. Alice has sent greetings. The Hood's Inglorious Rednell. <laughs> who'd have thought we'd have called Rednell Glorious? Um, but who'd have thought that's how we would do church a year on? What a mess this year have been, has been. What a mess. The reading that we had right at the beginning of our service from Psalm 126 describes a mess from 597 BC. Not just a physical mess, but an emotional and spiritual mess as well. For Israelites living at that time, their church, the temple, had just been destroyed by the Babylonians. The Babylonians had come in, destroyed Jerusalem. The entire place was a mess. So not just physical, but spiritually too, because don't forget that they believed that church was where God dwelt. So if you didn't have the temple, if you didn't have church, then God had nowhere to dwell with you. He didn't have a place to live. So spiritually, they were in a right mess too. And as for their emotions, goodness me, what would it have been like living in complete fear like they were? But our reading from Psalm 126 was a celebration of the people coming back to the temple. And it was either written just before they came back looking forward to the day of celebration, or it was written just afterwards writing about it. We simply don't know. But the people of Israel were living in terrible times because of the war that had destroyed their temple. The rebuilding of the mess, physical, spiritual, and emotional, was a time for great celebration. And for the Israelites, God fixed that mess. Psalm 126. And that was the reading chosen for the third Sunday in Advent for this particular year. It's not the only reading. There are four readings in the lectionary. The second reading from the Old Testament was actually from Isaiah 61. I'm going to read it. The uh, words will come up on screen. Isaiah 61, 1 to 4 and 8 to 11 says this. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance for our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness, I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord. 
My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the young plant come up, and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the Sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. You see, the people wanted God to fix the mess of their temple being destroyed. It was in ruins. They wanted to come back to their church. And clearly that happened, as Psalm 126 tells us. But Isaiah tells us of something even greater that God fixing the, than God fixing the mess of the church being destroyed. And this passage from Isaiah was written either at the same time as the psalm or probably slightly later. But it doesn't simply speak of God fixing the mess of the temple. It goes much further. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, says Isaiah. I'm going to fix the mess of the poor. Fix the mess of the brokenhearted. Fix the mess of the captives, of the prisoners. Instead of ashes, there'll be beauty. Instead of mourning, there'll be gladness. Instead of despair, there'll be praise. We won't celebrate because of a building. Verse 10, we will celebrate because of being saved. We will celebrate because of being rescued. This isn't God coming into the mess of a building. This is God coming into the mess of broken lives, of sadness, of crying, of pain. This is the God who promised to come into our world, not just the world of the Israelites' time. We've all heard, haven't we, the stories of people who in the last months have really struggled relationships struggling in this pandemic, divorces expected to hit an all-time high, abusive relationships have multiplied beyond comprehension, funerals attended by just a few, weddings cancelled or have to have small numbers, significant occasions skipped, sadness. I saw a news report earlier this week interviewing first-year university students whose mental health has gone down through the floor because since October they'd been shut inside one building, unable to get out, unable to even come home. Pastoral care being done on a computer or on a phone. And when we do meet up, we can't even hug each other, give support to one another in that way. And Isaiah looks forward to a time when God not only fixes the mess of a building, but begins to fix the mess of a world and all that suffers in it. And then we turn to Luke's Gospel. Luke chapter 4, verses 16 to 21. Jesus, in that passage, stands up in the synagogue in Nazareth. And he opens up a scroll. And he reads the exact same passage that we've just read in Isaiah. Can you imagine Jesus reading that same passage from Isaiah? Standing in the synagogue, reading that passage. And then Luke's Gospel tells us he takes the scroll that he's just read from and he puts it down. And Luke says, all eyes were fixed on him. What's he going to say? I think if he'd have had the same phrase that we have today, he'd have put, you could have heard a pin drop. And Jesus said, today, this verse is fulfilled. This verse from Isaiah has come true today. This little baby from the nativity story the one that we're singing the carols about, that we've not yet read in Mark's Gospel for the last two Sundays. Jesus makes this massive claim. This same Jesus declares to everyone that he is the one to come into the mess. 
But not simply the mess of the building, but rather the mess of devastated lives, of sadness, of captivity, of addiction, of chains, of despair, of abuse, of loneliness, of isolation, and of mourning. Jesus comes into that. Jesus becomes the rebuilder of ruins, to use Isaiah's phrase. He becomes the restorer of places that have been devastated. And on the third Sunday of Advent, we find joy because Jesus becomes the ultimate rebuilder of our lives. Instead of sorrow, gladness. Instead of despair, praise. The God who comes into the mess of our world today at the moment. And in the psalm, the people were praising God because they were going back to a building. But in this promise of Isaiah, taken up by Jesus, people rejoice, verse 10, because Jesus rescues them through his rebuilding. We've heard a few testimonies this morning of how we can still rejoice because God is still with us. Whatever mess you have, either as a result of this pandemic or outside of it as well, God promises to come into that mess and here is your promise that same Jesus born as a baby grew up to fulfill the things that he did he offers that same promise today to come into your mess to come into my mess but if that's Jesus's promise I think it's a fair question to say why are we still in a mess if Jesus claimed this promise of Isaiah to come into the mess, why is the world still messy? Fair question. And I wonder whether you remember me saying a couple of weeks ago when we were talking, I think, about a passage from Matthew's Gospel. And we were talking about whether this was about end times or whether it was about AD 70 or what, it, what we were talking about, prophecies. Are they for now or are they for the future, whatever. And I shared then... Part of my belief, I guess, part of my belief that I think some things that are written in the Bible were written for that specific time. Talking about something that was going on at that time and not written for a future time at all. But then I find that God appears to use those writers, appears, inspires, spiritually inspires those same writers, unbeknown to them, to use their words for br bigger promises to come. Remember me saying something similar to, to that? I find that with Isaiah as well. That our reading was not just for Isaiah's time. It was actually not just for Jesus' time, claiming that promise as well. I believe that it was written for a future time too. And that unbeknownst to Isaiah, or whoever wrote it, there will be a time when all things are sorted. The God who comes into the mess of a building is the God who comes into the mess of broken lives today and is the God who will eventually fix the mess of this world once and for all. We get similar words to Isaiah and Jesus later on in the Bible too. Used to describe the long-term future too, a vision, if you like, of God's eternal rule. Revelation 21 verse 3 says this, The dwelling of God is with all people, and He will live with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. God came into the mess of the past. The promises given in the Psalms and in Isaiah came true. A physical building was rebuilt and the people rejoiced. God came into the mess of the present. Jesus' birth, death, resurrection brought a new building, but not made of physical flesh, but of new life, spiritual life, bringing hope instead of despair, Gladness instead of sorrow. But let's not forget that God will complete the fixing of the mess in the future. There is this wonderful promise 
of God, that the ultimate building is still to come, where the old way of life is gone, and the joy of the Lord becomes all around us. And on this third Sunday in Advent, where mess is all around us and has caused such sadness, Psalm 126 reminds us that God can fix the mess of buildings. Isaiah 61 reminds us that God can fix the mess of our own hurt and sadness. But Revelation 21 reminds us that the mess of this world is only temporary. It won't last forever. Because God is still working His eternal plan. And it begins and it ends with Jesus. The God who brings joy on this third Sunday in Advent. the herald angels sing. And as they said to the shepherds, there is good news of great joy for all people. Therefore, we go from this place of worship full of joy, full of joy in our hearts, serving and living our lives in Christ, full of the spiritual joy that he pours out upon us. Lean on him, for he cares. He has come. And he is still to come. Emmanuel, God with us. It has been wonderful to share together this morning and worship together. Don't forget, next Sunday morning is a 
non-physical service. We will chat together on YouTube and share in the driving carol service next Sunday evening. You will need to book if you want to come to our physical carol service, which will be live streamed at six o'clock on YouTube too. May we pray as we conclude our worship together here. Go with us, almighty God, into our homes, into our workplaces, into all the places that you call us to this week. Equip us, strengthen us, protect us, and use us. Fill us with the joy that comes from knowing you. Fill us with the joy that comes from your Holy Spirit. That we might know you close to us in all that we do. For we rejoice because of your ultimate gift to the world. The gift of your Saviour, Jesus Christ our Lord. And so may the joy of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, go with each one of us. Remain with us, both now and forevermore. Amen. i